Now we've talked about all this theory, let's see it in action. Let's listen to example three. As you can see and hear in example three, there are many different kinds of harmony in this short piece for piano. I've labeled them on the score, but we're going to talk now about how the transitions are made. So a lot of the same transitions we were just talking about a few minutes ago, now we're going to discuss in action here, and I'll show you the details in each case of how it works. So we start off with this polyharmony chord at the beginning, which is repeated. Then in measure three, so what's the connection between measures one and two and measure three? Well, the left hand note is the same as G, just moved up an octave. The top note is the same also, it's C sharp, just moved out of the octave. And the A natural in measure three and the E each come conjunctly, respectively from A sharp and F sharp. So from this, so you can hear the voice leading is very smooth. And on top of that, the rhythmic motive is the same. Result, no great surprise there, even though the kind of harmony has changed. Then we go back to the polyharmony in measure five and six. Well, the root back is the same as the root getting there. It's again, it's simple voice fitting and common tones on the top and the bottom. Then we go to measure seven and eight. Now we go to... So how do we get from measure six to measure seven? Well, the first part is the same as it was before. The G in the left hand is the common tone. C sharp becomes D flat, which is also a common tone. A sharp becomes B flat, and D goes up to E flat. So it's the same principle, but I didn't get to the same chord. In other words, I'm using a kind of linear thinking here to get me to a different chord, but it's the same process. However, measure eight is different from measure seven. So how does measure eight link up to measure seven? Well, both of them are chords in thirds. Okay, they're seventh chords. The voice leading is very straightforward. Conjunct. Notice that measure eight has a kind of seventh chord, like that. And going to the next bar, the F sharp in the bass goes to B, so it creates a sort of a 5-1. The next two bars, nine and 10, are modal. So measure eight gives us a kind of dominant tonic. It's a minor dominant, but it's still a dominant. So that connects those two. And again, there's very smooth voice leading. Everything is stepwise on top, and the bass goes down a fifth. Within the modal passage, everything is pretty straightforward. Okay, so that stays modal. It starts off doing B minor with the G sharp, that is to say it's Dorian mode. In the second bar, the G sharp becomes G natural, so that's like Aeolian mode, just natural minor. Okay, simple modal harmony. And we got there from measure eight, which was a seventh chord, so it has a triad in. So that goes pretty well. Then we go to measure 11. Well, measure 11, how does measure 11 connect with measure 10? First of all, there's voice leading. The top note, F sharp, goes to the top note, E, in the right hand. The left hand has gone, next note is G, but I moved it down a couple of octaves. 
So there's a bit of a change in the octave disposition. However, the way it's set up, the motive when you hear measure 11 and 12, it's easily obvious that it's the same motive we had at the beginning. Also notice the kind of harmony in measure 11. In measure 11, the top notes, F sharp and C sharp, go to B and E. The A is a common tone. The E just doubles the E in the right hand an octave higher. However, this chord, for the first time, is not really a triad. Now, it could go on to a triad. It could go be an appoggiatura, but we don't know yet. The next bar, it goes on to a seventh chord. Okay, so at this point, we're sort of in between two kinds of harmony. Then we go back to, however, this time, the harmony, which in fact contains a fourth, a fifth, and another fourth, now goes to, so that's voice leading, common tones between 13 and 14, bass goes by step, top goes by step, common tones E and A, but now we've got harmony by fourths, by bar to our triads. When we get to measure 15, measure 15 is sort of in between, it contains fifths, but it also contains a third, so it's sort of unclear at this point, is it entirely back to the seventh chords of the tertian harmony, or is it going on to fourths, then 16 makes things clear. So in this case, going from the tertian harmony in measure 9 and 10 to the fourth based harmony, which really becomes clear only in measure 16, took me about five bars of transition. And in that transition, I'm going back and forth. I'm sort of zigzagging between the two. So gradually, one fourth chord, chord with thirds. Another fourth chord, thirds. Then more and more fourth chords. So you don't really feel that it goes bump at any one place. In addition, the motive is the same motive we had at the beginning. So that also helps to make associations to it. Doesn't it sound like we've just gone off the deep end into something else? By the time we get to measure 16 and 17, it's clear that we're in harmony by fourths. Okay, what about measure 18 and 19? Well, that's clearly harmony by fourths, once again, okay? The top notes are the same as they were in 17. The bass is the same, just moving down an octave. And then we just move in very straightforward harmony by fourths, okay? That, those two bars don't require anything other than harmony by fourths. Same thing for measure 20. Notice that measure 20 and 21 repeat the melody for nine and 10 and the bass also, in fact, but the harmonization in the middle is now by fourths. And then we land in a sort of a cadence with two fourths. Up to now, all of our harmony in by fourths has used perfect fourths and fifths. We have not used any tritones. In measure 23, we try something new. 22 is like this, 23, same chord, but with the tritone on top. So the tritone goes to a kind of neighbor chord, D and E, which then goes to another harmony by fifths, okay? So we have two new aspects here. We have the tritone, now added into the fourth chord, and we have this little second in the middle that's kind of a neighbor note, but it goes back into fifths again, fifths and fourths. In measure 25, we have the same chord we had in measure 23, but now, because the bass is moving, the D, E has an F sharp in the bass, which makes us a chord with D, E, and F sharp all at the same time. And then by simple voice theme, we go to, which has a second on top, and then the bass moves up to B, which gives us a little cluster. Okay, so now we've made a gradual transition from harmony by fourths into harmony in seconds. Again, it took us a couple of bars to get there. Measure 28 and 29. Well, that's clearly harmony by seconds for the most part. All these chords, with one little exception, all make up little clusters. The exception is this one, second beat of 29. That's E, D sharp, and G. Well, in the same way, the tonal harmony doesn't have only triads. It sometimes has passing chords also. Harmony by seconds can have a passing chord. Everything is conjunct. That happens to include something else. Okay? So it doesn't particularly stick out in context. There is a second in the chord, the D sharp to E, and the voice leading is smooth, so it doesn't really bother anybody. Now, then we go from 29 to the beginning, which returns. So how, what's the link between 29 and 30? Well, for one thing, the parts in, in 29, the outer parts are getting farther apart. 
So they're heading in the same direction. Okay. Also, the rhythm in 28, 29 is the same rhythm we've had a few times before. We've had it in 10 and we had it in 20. So we have that same rhythmic motive. And then when we get to 30, it also has the effect of a sort of a climax. The polyharmony is sort of a denser kind of harmony. So it feels like it makes a climax for 29. So that plus the fact that it's returning to something we already heard makes it fit in this case. If it were something completely new, it might sound very weird. So it's the return that helps a lot. I'm, I've created an association for the listener that is not too much of a shock. Okay, measure 31 is the same thing. What about 32? Well, 32, what I've done is I've taken some, some of the notes in the polychord from 31. The notes I've taken are D, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, and I've used them as a pitch class set. Okay, so that adds up if you want to think of it as a seventh chord. Okay. or it's a pitch class set, doesn't really matter how you look at it, but it adds up to a little set of notes. So I use the same pitches in 12 and uh, 32 and 33. Then 34 is the same chord, just transposed. Before it was, now it's this. So the voice theme leads me. And 35 is again transposed. In other words, I've made a sequence. I've made three presentations of this pitch class set, okay, moving through three transpositions, but the connection with 31 and 32 is simply all the same notes. Those are all common tones, and so is this, so are these. And then the rest is stepwise, and we have a sequence. So again, that makes sense. You can hear that the pitch class set comes from somewhere. Then we finally get the last phrase of the piece, which returns to modal. And if you look at the modal phrase in 9 and 10 and the one at the end, they're basically the same, except that the one at the end has slower values. So this is the exact same progression we had in 9 and 10. How do we get from 35 to 37? Well, the melody has been going down. So the F sharp goes to F, goes to E, and then we go to D. So the melody seems logical. Also, the motive in 34, 35 is a second followed by a third. Look at the motive in 37. Second followed by a third. Okay. There's also common tones. If you look at the last notes in 35, G and B in the left hand, the B is a common tone with 37, and the G goes to F sharp. So again, we have a lot of simple voice leading. We have a pattern, a motivic pattern that's the same. And in addition, 37 to the end reminds us of 9 and 10. So what that enables us to do is to bring the whole piece together in a way that's coherent, even though it uses quite a number of different harmonic techniques within a relatively short time. So if there's one word that's key to understanding how this works, the word is transitions. Look how the different kinds of harmony connect with each other. Notice also that in every single case, the voice leading is important. Okay, it's really important to see how one note or one chord leads to the next. Here's an exercise for this kind of eclectic harmony. Compose a short piece using at least three different harmonic techniques we've looked at in the course. Make the transition smooth and ensure the overall unity of the piece. You'll do that with motives and so forth.